Hello students, today we will discuss about the parotid gland. In today's lecture, we will talk about the boundaries of the parotid region. What are the bony boundaries? We will talk about the surfaces and the borders of this uh, parotid gland. And the important thing is surrounding relations of the parotid gland in comparison to the other structures. So, what is the introduction of the parotid gland? Now, whenever we will talk about the parotid gland, it is the largest salivary gland. We have the three salivary gland, parotid gland, submandibular gland and sublingual gland. Out of this, the parotid gland is the largest salivary gland and it is mainly serous in nature. That means the secretion which are coming out from the parotid gland are watery in nature and it is having very few amount of your mucus acini. This gland is irregular in nature and when you will do the dissection of the parotid gland, you will realize that the outer surface is lobulated. Now, when you will see the extension of the parotid region, it is from the zygomatic arch to the upper part of the neck where it overlaps the posterior belly of the digastric and anterior border of sternocleidomastoid. So here when you will see the parotid gland, now this is the black color line which is showing the outline of the area where you will find this parotid gland. Now in this region, you can see that this is your posterior belly of digastric. Now here is the posterior belly of digastric. Now this gland is overlapping the posterior belly of digastric and the gland is approaching into the lower part of the neck and this is your sternocleidomastoid so in this area the gland is overlapping the sternocleidomastoid this part is the area of carotid triangle so the gland is reaching into the upper part of carotid triangle and this is your masseter muscle so the gland anteriorly overlapping the masseter muscle clear so when you will see the parotid gland it extends from the zygomatic arch so zygomatic arch is here now this is your zygomatic arch so it extends from the zygomatic arch and it will enters into the upper part of your neck clear and here you can see that it overlaps the digastric muscle and sternocleidomastoid so these are the two muscles this is the digastric and this is sternocleidomastoid muscle now what are the boundaries of the parotid region? Now when you will see the boundaries, you have the anterior, posterior, superior and medial boundary. Now this anterior boundary, here in this diagram you can see that this is your mandible. Now the anterior boundary is formed by the posterior border of the ramus of mandible. So this part is known as ramus of mandible and this posterior border of the ramus is forming the anterior boundary of the region where you will have the parotid gland. Second thing is posterior boundary. The posterior boundary is formed by this bony projection and this projection is known as mastoid process. Then you have the superior boundary which is formed by the external acoustic meatus and the part of temporomandibular joint. So this is your external acoustic meatus and in front of the acoustic meatus you have this area which is actually the posterior part of your TM joint. Then you have medial relation where you have a bony process and that is known as styloid process. Clear? So when you are reading the parotid gland, you will find the parotid gland in this area and this is a bony demarcations or the bony linings of this area. Now anteriorly the gland overlaps the masseter muscle which I just told you. There is a small detached accessory parotid. There is a detached a small accessory parotid and it lies above the parotid duct second thing it lies on the aponeurotic part of masseter this is a question of your exam that where you will find the parotid accessory parotid tissue most commonly so it is present above the parotid duct along the aponeurotic part of masseter muscle. So where you will have the aponeurotic part, this white color area, if you will see here, is aponeurotic part of the masseter muscle. Now here, on this aponeurotic area, you are able to see this small details part and this is your accessory parotid gland and it is present above the parotid duct. So this tube is actually the parotid duct. 
so when you will see whole area what you are able to appreciate here that there are two things which you have to understand one is the accessory part of the parotid gland second thing the aponeurotic part of the mass masseter muscle and third it is along the upper border of this parotid duct then the gland extends below the external acoustic meatus posteriorly on the mastoid process so when you will see the gland it anteriorly extending on this masseter muscle and posteriorly it is sternocleidomastoid which is actually approaching the mastoid process so posteriorly gland is approaching towards the mastoid process anteriorly the gland is approaching the posterior border of mandible clear now in the transverse section now see the transverse section is important to understand the depth of the gland because when you are seeing the uh, gland from outside you are able to understand the outer surface but when you will take the transverse section of the head and neck region at that time you are able to see that what is the insertion or the depth of the gland in the area between your mandible and mastoid process so you have to first understand that this is your external acoustic meatus here is your mastoid process this is your mandible now in between these two you have a gap you can put your finger inside this area but this area is having deep placement of the parotid gland so when you will take the transverse section in the transverse section this is the outer surface of the parotid gland which you are able to see on the superficial dissection but when you will take the transverse section you will realize that between the mandible and mastoid process this gland is going very deep this gland is going deep clear so the transverse section of gland is showing that gland is a wedge shaped gland it occupies the gap between the ramus of mandible and the mastoid process and it will go deep towards the styloid process of the temporal bone so temporal bone styloid process is present here somewhere here in the deep part and this gland is invaginating or extending inside between the mandible and the mastoid process clear so the area which is present here this area is actually if you will put the wire or a needle through this area you will reach deep to this uh, area is known as pharynx so just outside the pharynx this gland is approaching towards the styloid process clear then it reaches close to the lateral wall of oropharynx so you have to understand this concept that this gland is showing your outer surface and in between the mandible and the mastoid process the gland is invaginating deep and it is approaching to reach this central tube is known as pharynx where it is also come in relation with the styloid process now in this diagram you can see that this is your ramus of mandible now posteriorly you have the mastoid process now in between them i told you the gland is invaginating so this is the part which is invaginating between the gland clear so this is the first and most important thing which you have to understand that this is the outer surface of the gland which you are able to see but when you will see the gap between the mastoid process and the posterior border of the mandible you will realize that this is the internal invagination or this is the internal uh, extension of the gland and this extension is approaching towards the pharynx now when you will see the external surface external features now there are it is a three sided pyramid what does it mean that you know that we if you will draw the pyramid now this is the base of the pyramid and the three sided pyramid means that these are the three sided pyramid where you have the three surfaces now if i will invert this pyramid that means this base will go up and this apex will come down in that way you have this reverse of the pyramid now the parotid gland is of this shape so parotid gland is actually a three sided pyramid its apex is directed downward so the apex is directed downward the base is on the superior part so this actually the upper part of the your parotid gland is known as superior surface of the pyramid 
or it is also known as base of the pyramid and apex is downward which is actually projecting into the upper part of the neck so when you will see the surfaces and border now if i will take the section of this pyramid how it should look like now this should be look like a wedge of now in this wedge when i am taking a transverse section of this gland it should look like a three sided pyramid all the three surfaces in this section so this is your suppose towards the mandible so this is anterior border this is towards the mastoid process so this is the posterior border and it is facing towards the pharynx so it should be the medial border but when you will see the actual image of this gland in your book it is not like that it is actually having the change in the surfaces why there is a change in the surfaces because the mandible bone is coming anteriorly and mastoid process bone is the mastoid process present posteriorly so ultimately this bone is invaginating from anterior side this bone invaginating from posterior side and what should be the final picture of this uh, surface the final picture will be like you have the impression from for both these bones so this is what you have in your books so you have to understand whenever you are drawing the image of your parotid gland or whenever you are drawing the parotid gland surfaces you have to understand that this surface and which is between the anterior border and medial border is having a concavity to accommodate the posterior margin of the mandible while the surface which is between the posterior border and medial border is having concavity to accommodate the mastoid process clear now on the basis of this you have the four surfaces superior surface or the base you have the superficial surface superficial surface means outer surface or the lateral surface you have anteromedial surface so this hole is anteromedial surface then posteromedial surface this hole is the posteromedial surface then you have the three borders anterior border medial border and posterior border clear so in this diagram also you have to understand this that this is your anterior border this is your posterior border and this is your medial border now this surface which is known as anteromedial surface is here now you see this surface is not a flat or a straight surface you have the concavity in this surface because the mandible is invaginating from anterior side clear so you whenever you are drawing the diagram of parotid gland we always draw draw in this fashion that you have to keep these impressions on the gland for the surrounding bone from anterior side mandible from posterior side mastoid process so what are the relations of different parts of your parotid gland first we'll talk about the apex apex projects downward apex project downwards and it overlying the posterior belly of the digastric muscle which we discussed in this diagram so this is your apex this shadow is showing the apex now this apex part is actually overlapping this muscle is known as posterior belly of digastric and after that this parotid gland is reaching into the upper part of carotid triangle now this is emerging the structure those are emerging from the apex there are cervical branch of the facial nerve anterior and posterior division of retromandibular vein now this retromandibular vein is formed by the joining of or commencement of the two veins one is known as superficial temporal vein another is known as maxillary vein so in this diagram you can see that this is your superficial temporal vein this is your maxillary vein both of them are joining to form the retromandibular vein now this retromandibular vein then divide into the two part and these anterior posterior division will come out from this apex of your parotid gland along with that you have cervical branch of the facial nerve that i will show you in the coming diagrams 
so here you have to keep in mind the two structures which are merging emerging from the apex of your parotid gland then in this diagram again you can see this is your superior surface this is your anterior border this is your posterior border this is the apex the apex is projecting downward and it is reaching into the carotid triangle upper part now here you can see the shadow of your retromandibular vein it is dividing into the two part so these are the important thing now you cannot appreciate the formation of retromandibular vein why because retromandibular vein is present in the substance of parotid gland so when you will cut the parotid gland you are able to appreciate the vein inside the gland clear now what is the superior surface relation or the base now this is known as superior surface or base i told you that apex is downward base is on the upper part so in the base it is concave and it is in relation to the external acoustic meatus with the posterior part of tm joint so this is your external acoustic meatus and this is your posterior part of tm joint so in this area you will find the superior or the base of the parotid gland now in this base you are having the two structure those are coming out and going into the temporal area first is known as superficial temporal artery and another is auricular temporal now now for understanding these two things you should have the idea a bit idea about the infratemporal fossa how the auricular temporal nerve comes out because you have to first realize that auricular temporal nerve is a branch of posterior division of mandibular nerve now in this diagram you can see that this is the foramen oval now from the foramen oval you have the exit of the mandibular nerve from that you have the posterior division from posterior division this is the auricular temporal nerve which is making a loop around the middle meningeal artery and then this nerve is coming out and it will ascend here now see this is your external acoustic meatus now in front of the external acoustic meatus this is the mandibular fossa so this is the posterior part of mandibular fossa and this is external acoustic meatus in between the two you are having the entry of auricular temporal nerve clear so this is the first thing which you should realize that how the auricular temporal nerve is coming in relation with the parotid gland so this is the first thing which you have seen here is the infratemporal fossa exit of the nerve now if we'll do the layer by dissection now this is what is your lateral pterygoid muscle so once you will cut the lateral pterygoid then and then only you can see the foramen oval so outside this you have the lateral pterygoid muscle now here you can see again that this is your artery now this is your artery named as your external carotid artery now this external carotid artery is giving the branch is known as superficial temporal artery and maxillary artery which are the two terminal branch of this external carotid but again the important thing is that this external carotid is again become the part or sub, uh, uh, internal structure of the parotid gland so here is the parotid gland clear so this external carotid enters into the parotid gland it divides into the two branches terminal branches inside the parotid gland and its one terminal branch will come out outside and that is your temporal artery clear so here you have to first keep in mind that this is your infratemporal fossa outside the infratemporal fossa you have your lateral pterygoid muscle here you also can appreciate now the artery and the most outside you have this mandible so if you want to approach the infratemporal fossa you have to first remove this ramus of mandible then you have to see for the lateral pterygoid once you remove the lateral pterygoid you will enter into the infratemporal fossa so when we'll finish this whole dissection at the end you will realize that how these two structure those are known as auricular temporal now you can see this yellow color line and this red color line that is your artery comes here and which area is this this area is between the anterior part of external acoustic meatus 
anterior part of external acoustic meters and behind this joint that is known as temporomandibular joint. So in this group you have the two structures and these structures will come out from the base of your gland after piercing the base. Then here in this diagram you can appreciate I am talking about this artery and this artery is between the posterior part of the TM joint but anterior to the external acoustic meatus. So here in this diagram also you can appreciate the artery in the dry specimen of the bones. Then we have the lateral surface. Now lateral surface is the outer surface and this outer or superficial or the lateral surface is the largest and it is covered from superficial to deep if you do the layer by layer dissection you will find you have the skin you have the superficial fascia and platysma now in this diagram you can see that this is your parotid gland now the this portion that is known as your anterior part of the parotid gland is overlaid by these are the fibers of platysma so you have to realize that platysma is even going so upper so long that it covers the sum of the areas of your parotid gland clear so it is not only the superficial fascia but the platysma also contribute into the layer of your superficial surface of parotid gland along with that we know we have already done this that the investing layer which is splits into the two part that is a part of the deep cervical fascia and it envelop the gland on the outer side which is further merged with this zygomatic arch and it is known as your parotid fascia or parotidomesetric fascia. Now I, I will discuss it in detail in the next video that what are the different part of this parotid fascia. Then this outer leaf extends superiorly to the as a parotico mesetric fascia the deep parotid lymph nodes are also embedded into the gland so when you see the outside in outer part what are the layers first is the skin then you will have superficial fascia you have the platysma you have the investing layer uh, modification is known as parotid fascia and along with these fascia you have the parotid lymph nodes then what is anteromedial surface now i told you that anteromedial surface is the surface that is present between the anterior border and the medial border now this anteromedial surface is anteriorly having an impression by posterior border of the mandible now you know that what are the muscles attached on outer and inner surface of mandible outer surface of mandible receives the attachment of masseter muscle and inner side of this angle of mandible receives the attachment of medial pterygoid muscle so but obviously these all three structures come in relation with this anteromedial surface of parotid gland so it, it is deeply grouped by the posterior border of the ramus of mandible it is related with the masseter and medial pterygoid plus the ramus of mandible so all these three are actually the structures those are emerging from the anterior side and invaginating the anteromedial surface to provide the concavity so you can see that this concavity on the anterior aspect is in relation with the three structure this is the ramus of mandible and it is the posterior margin along with that outside you have the masseter on inside you have the medial pterygoid muscle apart from that the gland is also rev around the part of your tm joint the branches of facial nerve emerges on the face from underneath the anterior margin of this surface so from this surface the some branches of facial nerve will also emerges then we have the posteromedial surface what is posteromedial surface posteromedial surface is this is your anteromedial surface and this is your posteromedial surface now this posteromedial surface is having the area for mastoid process 
This anteromedial surface is having the area for ramus of mandible. Now on this posteromedial surface where you have the mastoid process, you know that outside the mastoid process, we have the attachment of muscle A is known as sternocleidomastoid. While on the inner side of the mastoid process, you have the posterior belly of diagastric. So it is more on the mastoid process plus on the deep, it will reach to styloid process. So here is the styloid process. This is the pharynx. So this medial border is approaching the pharynx. So it is known as pharyngeal border. And when this border is going to the pharynx in the way it is also come in relation with the structure around the styloid process. So it mold around the mastoid process. It comes in relation with the styloid process. On the mastoid process, you have the two muscle outside sternocleidomastoid inside posterior belly of digestery. And when you will see the styloid process, what obviously comes in the relation with the muscles which are present on, on, on the styloid process like a stylohyoid. The styloid process and its muscles separate the gland from the internal carotid artery, internal jugular vein and the last four cranial nerve. Because on the medial side, here you have the jugular foramen and carotid canal. The following structures, those enter the gland through this structure. Now this is the most important multiple choice question which you have to understand that when we'll discuss in the next class the structures present inside the parotid gland, you are able to realize that there are three structures in the gland. One is the external carotid artery which is the most medial structure, then you have the retromandibular vein and then you have the facial nerve. Now the important thing is that the retromandibular vein and the facial, uh, this artery, these both are the vertical structure. Suppose these are the two structure, the medial most is my artery, next to that this blue pan is your vein and you have horizontally placed now. So when you will take the section of your parotid gland in horizontal plane, you are able to appreciate that there is a lumen on the medial most is the artery, then the lumen of your vein and then you are able to see the horizontal placement of the nerve. Now, the, the important thing is that the artery and vein are related with which layers or uh, which surfaces of the parotid gland. So it is very clearly written here that facial nerve and external carotid artery both enters into the gland through the posteromedial surface, through the posteromedial surface, but now in the upper part and artery in the lower part. Why lower part? Because artery is ascending. So, but obviously it will enter into the gland from the lower side. So it is become very important to realize that which surface allow the entry of facial nerve and external carotid artery answer is posteromedial surface. Now here in this diagram also you can see that when we'll discuss about the mastoid groove, mastoid process, so this is the mastoid process, this is your mandibular fossa. Now this mandibular fossa is for the head of mandible where you have the TM joint. Now this is your styloid process, clear? And here you have the jugular fossa and this is the carotid canal. Now if we will do the placement of your parotid gland, now this parotid gland is having the outer surface which is here, then you have the pharynx which is present here, suppose this is the pharynx, now this is the your anteromedial border, this is your anteromedial border, now this is your postero, posteromedial border, something like this, clear? Now here now you can understand that this gland is now in relation with the structure which are present here that is the posterior border of the ramus of mandible and here it is related with the mastoid process. Here it comes in relation with the styloid process and this styloid process separates the gland from the structure which are here like internal carotid artery and last four cranial nerve. Then in this diagram, you can appreciate that this is the anterior border of parotid gland. Now from the anterior border of parotid gland, you are having the emerging of your arteries, nerves like the temporal branch, zygomatic branch, upper and lower buccal, 
you have the marginal mandibular while the apex when you will see the apex this is the apex and from the apex you have the exit of this now and these are the branches of transverse cervical nerve so transverse cervical nerves emergence from the apex while the most of the branches are emerging from the anterior border the posterior border will give emerging of posterior auricular nerve which is a motor nerve to supply the posterior belly of your occipital now in this lower part you can see that this is the horizontal course of facial nerve now this is your posteromedial surface so the question is that facial nerve enters through which surface answer is posteromedial surface so what is about the anterior border i already told you the nerves those are coming out so this is the question of your exam write down the structure from above downward emerging from the anterior border so upar se niche from above downward you have the temporal then you will have zygomatic then you will have upper and lower buccal and then you will have this mandibular now marginal mandibular not the cervical because cervical will come out from the apex so what are the name written here temporal zygomatic then you will have buccal now these are upper and lower buccal and lastly the marginal mandibular so four divisions are coming out from anterior border now this buccal now will divide into the two branch upper buccal and lower buccal and in between the upper and lower buccal you have the parotid duct so parotid duct present between the upper and lower buccal branches of buccal now which is a branch of your facial now so all these are the motor branches those will supply the different muscles of the face then posterior border i told you that posterior border is the border which separate the lateral surface from the posteromedial surface and from the posterior border you will have the two structure one is the posterior auricular artery and the posterior auricular branch of facial now medial border now we have seen that medial border is deep border which is approaching the pharynx that's why it is also known as pharyngeal border and medial border separates the intermedial surface from the posteromedial surface and this surface is related with the lateral wall of pharynx so at the end of this lecture of parotid gland we are able to understand the different relations of different surfaces different borders and the particular and important thing is that how the parotid gland shape changes to the actual image which you are able to see that the anteromedial and posteromedial surface are not flat but they are having the respective concavity for the bones which are present from anterior and posterior side so this is all for today's class thank you